morning, small fishing boats leave the port of Bueo in the Spanish Galicia to look for edible razor clams a few kilometers from the mainland, near Onch, one of the Galician islands in the Atlantic. This is a specially protected area. Only the most careful fishing methods are allowed. Jesus, who is 31, has been catching the clams for the past five years. Like other fishermen in the area, he doesn't use any industrial tools that could damage the seabed. Instead, he dives to find and carefully pull mollusks from the sand, one by one. Es mucho mejor. It's a much better, more sustainable method, ecologically speaking, because it doesn't disturb the sea floor. You don't damage other organisms. You breathe with the compressor and use your eyes to find the razor clams and pick them by hand. It's more selective. You only take the larger ones that have reached the commercial size. Preserving this traditional method allowed this fishery to achieve the Marine Stewardship Council certification, recognizing its sustainability. The workday isn't very long, as each clammer is only allowed to collect 15 kilograms of mollusks. Controls are mandatory. The catchers are verified by their colleagues and are often checked by the authorities. So what makes these restrictions necessary? A few years ago, the Atlantic islands of Galicia, both the land and adjacent sections of sea, were declared a national park. The unique ecosystem of these archipelagos requires constant protection. For the park administration, that meant curbing the flow of tourists to manageable levels and reaching an understanding with local fishers. If the fishers can see that the protection measures improve the livelihood for themselves and their families, then it's a win for us all. Then they can continue fishing for many more years, while the bird and fish populations continue to live here, and the tourists who also make part of our ecosystem can keep enjoying this protected area. The Atlantic Islands, with their natural beauty and white sandy beaches, attract thousands of tourists every day. This was seen as an opportunity for fishers to earn more while catching less. A local group started training artisanal fishermen to also work as tourist guides. From the very start of this training project, we've been teaching the fishers to pass the environmental message to tourists. That seemed essential in this natural park setting. Hundreds of local fishers and shellfishers have taken the training course in pesca tourism, thanks to the support of the European Maritime Fisheries and Aquaculture Fund. Javier Costa was one of the first to participate in this project. He works together with his wife and son on a small longliner vessel, which is now equipped to take up to four passengers on board. Pesca tourists can see how fishers work, learn more about sea life, and see some unique views of the Atlantic islands. Javier says that the five dozen tourists they've taken out with them over the past year could see how artisanal fishing can safely coexist with fragile ecosystems. I took part in this project so that everyone can see that we care for the parks and their resources. We've been fishing here for ages and ages. And it's not just Europe's coastal regions that can truly benefit from preserving their fish traditions. The landlocked Czech Republic has countless ponds where fish have been bred since the Middle Ages. It's local aquafarmers that take care of these essential water bodies. The ponds are really important for the environment and for the landscape because ponds create a microclimate around its area because it produces a lot of steam which is also great for the landscape around us and also for other farmers. Local scientists help breeders keep this fish-raising method competitive to preserve the ponds that are so important for local ecosystems. They are very good for biodiversity of the animals and plants around. 
They are protecting towns and villages uh, against the flooding. We are doing research uh, to, to achieve a win-win situation between the uh, production, uh, which is in the interest of the farmers, as well as the ecosystem services, which are in the interest of the water protection. Unlike more industrial methods, this so-called extensive aquaculture does not amass large numbers of fish in tight spaces, so water pollution remains low. The Sanakva Research Centre in southern Bohemia runs a number of projects supporting this traditional industry. Here, fish geneticists are breeding species that are most suitable for extensive aquaculture. We can put fewer fish in the pond and achieve the same production, as if the ponds were more densely populated and supplemented with more feed. Czech researchers are looking to combine fish breeding with crop cultivation in a circular economy approach. Some aquaculture methods can pollute water with feed residue and fish waste, but this waste can be turned into a resource. This experimental hydroponic facility recycles water from fish tanks as a source of nutrients for growing salads, tomatoes and other greenhouse plants. The sludge from the fish comes here, we recycle it here. We don't let it go to the environment and cause its footprints. In a very small area, we are culturing more food with less amount of water and nutrients and less emissions. So that is aquaponics. It's an integrated system. Public health can be another winner. This kindergarten joined a project that introduces children to fish sausages, meatballs and other dishes. We know that uh, the eating habits are developed early in the childhood. We are uh, focused on the children because when they learn to eat and like fish at this age, they will do it whole of their life. Fish consumption in the Czech Republic is among the lowest in Europe. Researchers want to find out which tastes, shapes and colours of fish food children would be most happy to eat. In the four years that we've been participating in this project, most of the kids got used to eating fish products. Now they understand that fish can have various tastes and that it's healthy. So traditional fishery and aquaculture can play a positive role in the health of both children and of nature.